This week in the studio, some really fun stuff has happened. I had a really lovely weekend. The weather is warmer again, finally, which is how I prefer my autumn to have a little bit of warmth, not already snowing on Halloween like we had last week. But this week has been nicer weather and I was able to go to a super fun nerd gaming convention on Saturday. And it was lovely. It was a really nice time. I picked up a new board game that is currently funded by a Kickstarter and they're getting ready to release. Those details will be down in the description below. I haven't played it yet, but let's just say it's focused on fairies, flowers, and all the good things that you already know I love. So I'm really excited to play that. So that was Saturday. Not a lot of crafting happened that day. Well, earlier in the day than in the evening, I did end up with a bunch of crafting time. And I got the strap finished for the snail bag. The snail bag is done. Um, I am so amped in case you can't tell by my face. So I finished the strap. There was some fiddling about and I finally landed on a design that I'm pretty happy with. There was a couple things I would maybe change. I don't know. We'll discuss. If you've seen my shorts already, I've showed it off and how it looks on my back. But here she is. <laughs> it is everything I could have wanted and more. I mean, really. And the colors are showing up nice and true. So this is a lovely like little minty green and kind of a light creamy yellow with a bright blue, light blue, kind of like sky-ish bright blue uh, strap. And the reason for this is because my child is a genius and suggested that the strap should look like the trail of snail slime. So that was the vibe we were going for. Maybe not totally obvious, but for me, in my heart, that is what it is. So I used several different findings. These were all ones that I had already in my stash. I am a like a purse and bag findings hoarder. If I ever have a belt I'm getting rid of or shoes that get trashed that have buckles or loops or anything like that on it or um, bad like lanyards <laughs> from conventions, I cut them apart like that's where this one came from. This part was from a convention lanyard. Um, this was probably from a dog collar. but. I keep them so that I can use them for projects like this because I hate buying the new ones. And like often I'll find them in thrift stores, like completely new sets. So I usually snatch those up as well, but really happy with what I had on hand and how well it works. So this is a crossbody snail bag situation. The zipper on the bottom. So this goes against your back or front, however you want to wear it. And then the zipper and the lining. So cute. Um, you can get stuff, that's my hand in there. All the way up to the top, it has fit quite a lot of goods in my various attempts to shove things in. Um, unlike some of my other bags where I've struggled to make them big enough, namely the um, the LaCroix can, which photo here. Uh, the LaCroix can I had trouble with after I finished it. I was really devastated because it didn't even, it fits my wallet and all my essentials except for my phone. And for me, I really want my phone to be in a bag. So that one I'm a little bummed out about. And my mushroom bags, I have a big phone. So like, I feel like I'm not, it's not, it's going to be a just me problem, especially with the mushroom bags, the Mary mushroom ones, which little photo pop up here. These guys also are just like, I'd like them to be a tiny bit bigger if I was going to use them for daily use. Like I use them for fun, like one-off events when I know I'll have pockets for my phone. But a lot of times I don't have pockets because stupid, but this one will everything. So I'm very, very pleased. Let me uh, struggle to put it on across the front. I could unclip it. That would be much more graceful. But like, 
so I can adjust the strap and make it a bit longer as well. But when it's more snug to your body, the snail is more upright and climby. <laughs> Um, the math was mathing for this whole project. Even the way the body worked out with the bottom sides for inputting the zipper, the two halves of the bottom, the way it worked out, it gave it this like lovely arched look, which I think makes it look even more real and snail-like. Like it's coming up to give you a kiss, which is nice. Who doesn't want a kiss from a snail? So I'm amped. There may be some tweaks to the final pattern, probably involving the strap, but all in all, super pleased with the outcome. Just so happy. And it's very squishy because it is stuffed to give that shell its nice, nice shape. But it's got a level of firmness and stability because it's also made of cotton. There's no armature inside this one. Um, my last several bags, my VHS bag and my ramen bag, have had plastic canvas inside to help them keep shape. And I mean, it's a snail. They don't have skeletons, so it can be kind of squishy. The ruffle action. Just real pleased, in case you can't tell. This came out truly better than I was even envisioning. Um, especially partway done. Like, when I had gotten the body nearly finished before I stitched in the underside. I was kind of like, okay, it's looking good. It's looking fine. But once I stitched in the underside and did the edging and then did the ruffle, I was flabbergasted by how stupendous it looks. So I've actually already had someone interested in testing reach out via email. If you're interested in testing, I would love to have one or two more people join in the test, send me an email down below. There's no like major requirements. Even if you maybe aren't the most advanced crocheter, I feel like you'll be able to stretch yourself and learn some new techniques and get this, get this bag made. I've, I'm an over writer for my patterns. I try to make sure that things are really, really well explained. And this will be no different because there are some kind of funky situations here. Putting in a zipper can seem intimidating. I did use my machine for this, but in the pattern, I'm going to include both the machine and hand instructions. Most of my bags, I do put the zipper in by hand. So if you can thread a needle and go up and down with it into some fabric, you can put a zipper in. I promise. It seems daunting, but it's really not as scary as it seems. I think you can do it. The lining as well. Some of my other bags, like the VHS bag, have a crocheted lining where it's essentially just kind of stitched in around the zipper. And this one I felt because of how stuffed the shell was, I was afraid about including a crochet lining because if you had things like pencils or smaller items, crochet hooks, things that could slip potentially in between some stitches and go into the abyss that is the rest of the snail shell, I was afraid about the potential for losing items. So I opted for a fabric lining, which again, I used part of my machine for part of it, and then attached it. If we will adjust, that would be great. Come on. Um, my machine for part of it, which you can vaguely see there, and then I hand-stitched it in. If you don't have a sewing machine, you could very easily hand-stitch all of this. If you do have a sewing machine, it'll just make the lining go faster. So if you're feeling adventurous, and you're obsessed with this snail, and you would like to test it, I would love to have any level of crocheter give it a test because let's have let's have everybody have a snail backpack. Like, come on, it's so good. Um, she doesn't have a name for sure yet, and also my child would like a smiley face here, which I didn't put on yet, so we will do that. 
I don't think I'm going to put eyeball marks on top of the stalks. I just, I really like it as is. But if you want to test, my email's down below. Please email me. I'm looking at having this pattern completely done, like ready for the public by the end of the year. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, testers get first dibs of the pattern and then get uh, the final pattern faux free as well as discounts to the rest of the patterns in my shop as gratitude. That's what it is. It's very chill. Not a huge deadline. I'm fun. We get to chat and you get to tell me everything I did wrong in the pattern. So that is what I'm working on this week is typing up that pattern. I have several other patterns that are almost ready to go as well. Like the gooseberry socks, uh, video magic these guys remember a million years ago i knit too surprise um but these guys the pattern's like done <laughs> just haven't posted it yet um so that really uh should be on my docket as well i have a long weekend coming up during which i will be on the road again so i'm not sure that i'm gonna get the gooseberry socks up but I am going to really be prioritizing taking my written notes for the snail and at least typing them into a semi-coherent pattern so that folks can begin the testing process, which will be fun and exciting. I love seeing how people interpret the pattern and what they make out of it, their color choices, everything. Super fun. Beyond that, and also there's the ramen bag pattern, right? <laughs> I don't know about that one. I don't know. Uh, there are parts of it that are very straightforward. Most of it is just circles, right? Most of it is just working in the round. There are two parts that I am nervous about writing out the pattern for. One of them is the pork belly uh, swirls. That was weird. That was a weird process to undergo, and it took me quite a while to figure out how to do it. And it would be really messy to write up. I took good notes while I was doing it, so I remember how it was done. But that one's going to be a mental flex and mooshing around to try and figure out how to write it. So encourage me. If you really want that ramen bag pattern, like sound off in the comments, because right now, Snail is priority, as well as my existing basically done patterns, getting those out, those are the priority, versus really, really trying and writing up the ramen pattern, which, doable, but snail, right? Okay. The other things that I worked on this week, I finished that spinning that I showed you last week that had a pathetically small amount left. Yay! It looks so good, Get. Come on. Come on. My phone. Really? Okay. Well, I guess you'll just have to deal with a little blur, huh? Good ender. It's very, very yummy. Like greens, blues, it is all the good colors that I love and adore. This fiber, like almost all my fiber, came from Mother of Pearl. They will be linked below. They're a very, very talented designer, textile artist, dyer. I love the way that they pair textures and colors, and every spin I've done of theirs has been just pure joy. So this is no different. I really enjoyed spinning it. I spent part of Sunday finishing it up. It did not take long. It was like five minutes of spinning, maybe, and got it off the wheel. It's a single now, and I went through my fiber stash to see what I could possibly ply it with. This is the thing, right? It's my goal to have all my fibers spun by the end of the year. I have all these lofty goals. And I'm actually doing pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I think I will get probably all of my stash of Mother of Pearl fibers spun up. I did buy a very large amount of local fiber that's natural and undyed that I don't think is going to get finished by the end of the year. In my mind, I have this plan that I would really love to take all of my very colorful hand spuns that I have so far and pair them with 
that natural, like all the finished yarns of these colorful things paired with the very natural yarn as like a striped hand spun sweater. Right? It'd be chunky and yummy and squishy. And it'd be really meaningful for me because a lot of it is local or made by a dear friend. The fibers, you know, collected and dyed by a dear friend. So it'd be like really, really meaningful and special. And I would like to do that. But I have a lot of spinning left to do before I have the yardage for a sweater. I'm probably close, but I want to pair the colors with that natural fiber that I have. But all that has to get spun up first before we even start doing the knitting on it. So that's just in my mind. I have also thought about pairing some of the colors that I have with that natural as like to ply with so that it's like kind of a natural with a pop of color yarn and I really am tempted to do that with this one I may still decide to do that but I am spinning up probably the last really large fiber amount I have is this and, the, and I have this is maybe 30 percent left to do. The rest is video magic on the spinning wheel. And here's my thing, right? I really like this and I love how it's spinning up. It is a little more rustic and toothy, which I enjoy in a fiber. That is from the Shetland. It's a Shetland Romney BFL bat with maybe a little bit of merino in it. Um, it came... In the fiber subscription, it came with a set of merino locks. So I think the tag had all the different fibers listed and the locks, which are little curls and are super cute. Those I think were the merino, but there is some in here, some fibers that seem really merino-y, very slick, very nice, very, very silky. But the rest is definitely that that Shetland Corydale Romney. Or maybe not Corydale. I wrote down what it was. Shetland Romney BFL. That's the vibe I'm getting from this. There may also be Merino. But this, you saw it on the spinning wheel, right? It looks like camping. It looks like a cabin. It looks like winter at a cabin to me. It looks like thick socks, cozy wool socks. I don't know if I want to pair it with this. I really like how this looks alone. I really like the texture of this. And I really like how this looks alone. And I really like the texture of this. So like, I feel like they would almost be in competition with each other. I don't know. I don't know. Like, is it going to overly green wash itself out and then neither will be special? That's my fear, right? Like, that it's just going to be, like, green blah. Which green is my favorite color, so green blah is not okay. We want green to look amazing. So, like, I don't know. So I'm debating that because that's my thing, right? The rest of the fibers that I have in my stash, I've already paired them with what I want to spin them with. There's two other sets so four more fibers besides the um the giant bump of local fiber there's two colorful sets one is like reds and greens paired with a bright red and then the other one is a kind of a jewel tone teal paired with like this really fun electric yellow and that one's going to be really funky i'm excited about but this one i'm not sure I'm just not sure, guys. Like, right there. Love that. But then once we get into the greens, I don't know. I don't know. I may just ply a tiny bit of it and see what it looks like. I'm in, I'm in very indecisive mode right now. So that is... Those are the crafts, pals. That's what's up. I am excited and also daunted by the fact that I am now in the era of figuring out when I'm going to work on 
the holiday projects. I have a couple sorted out that I need to work on. Nothing major. I don't do the insane level of crafting for holiday gifts that I used to. I just make a few things for people who are really, really truly knit or crochet worthy or for people who specifically have requested something and I know will take care of it, right? Like somebody's like, oh, make me a sweater. I'm like, oh, go away. Um, but like, you know, the one, the good ones, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So I have a couple projects that I have to work on for that, that I'm excited to work on, but also like not quite ready to be making holiday gifts yet. It doesn't feel holiday-y. I'm not ready for it. I'm not in the spirit, but we'll see. Maybe by the end of the week I will be. And next week you'll see a project update of Christmas gifts. I don't know. We'll find out. Until next time, stay crafty.